In this video, we're going to talk about why late head movement fails and early head movement succeeds. We're going to answer a couple questions from our readers. Forward momentum's impact on hitting a curve ball. Does a wide stance give more balance and ability to see the curve ball better or any kind of breaking ball? We're going to go over the myth of keeping your head still <clears throat> and how the eyes adjust proprioception and sitting back. We're going to talk about the first baseman receiving a throw and then how the eyes jump when moving all the time. So we're going to talk, talk about the myth of keep your head still and that the eyes adjust and we're going to talk about a Greg Maddox article that's actually below this video. There's another article I'm going to remember to put on there. If I don't remind me, post a post a question to the bottom of this video if I forget but there's an article that of a a guy who's an expert hitting guy he his stuff definitely checks out with my stuff I agree with a lot of what he says and it's a he he analyzed the top 10 hitters I think it was in 2012 it was an older article but it's still good and there was a section in there where if you go under you click the link and then go into where it says head movement and he goes in and he analyzes like from Albert Pujols to Joe Maurer to all these different guys and he found that all of them had head movement all of them before landing he said they differed in how far they went. Torrey Hunter was another one. I think he was the leading one. He had the most head movement. The least head movement was Joe Maurer, but his head still moved. So the, the idea, the objective of the article is that head movement, that's a, it's a myth, that we do not want head movement at all. There's going to be head movement early, but we do not want it later, and I'll explain that in a minute. But I wanted to bring up, there was an article that I have below this video by Greg Maddox, and he talks about his big secret was getting the hitter to see everything the same, the same release point, the same everything, almost the same speed. It almost looked the same speed because it was like when you're, when you're driving on a freeway, say for two, three hours, driving to 65, 70, 75, you rebels are up at 85, whatever, your eyes adjust to the speed. So the time you start to get off the on-ramp, the off-ramp, you have to remember to break more than you would normally do compared to what your eyes are actually seeing because if you don't you're so used to that that 80 miles an hour on the freeway for two or three hours straight your eyes adjust to that and you have to you're going to come up that off ramp a lot faster than you want to and you could barrel into any cars in front and I actually did this when I first started driving I got used to going 65 70 and this was about 10 minutes driving around with my parents and then I came up off the off ramp and my father almost swallowed his tongue sitting next to me in, his pa in the passenger seat. I gave my mom gasping in the back. So I came up too quick because my eyes adjusted to the 65 miles an hour. So this is what Greg Maddox said that he used was his main thing. He was a big poker player guy. So always tried to keep things behind that veil of, of his poker face. So this, this myth of keeping your head still, I usually go into my, with my hitters and talk about this big ugly word is proprioception. Now it's, it's a big ugly word, but basically what's, what it means is that if I were to tell you to stand on one leg, stand on your best leg, your right leg, if you're right, hand, right, right footed, and just close your eyes and try and balance. Now that shifting back and forth, fourth of your foot is proprioception. So your brain can't rely on vision, so it has to figure out how to balance the body unconsciously. You aren't having to think about, I'm not thinking about, oh, shift inside, oh, shift outside, oh, shift inside, inside. It's not a logical, it's not a conscious effort. My brain does this unconsciously, does it behind the scenes. So how this compares with dynamic movement or actually moving like, a, like an athlete would move as a hitter, how this compares is if we say, if we tell our hitters to sit back all the time, which I was taught growing up, sit back, sit back. So I was taught to sit back and as I stride that I want to keep about 60% of my weight back here and I want about 40% forward and feeling like when I stride that I'm striding on eggshells that I don't want to break. Now the problem with that is if we look at it through the lens of proprioception is that if I keep my weight back here by the time I start to turn what's going to happen and this was my issue is I struck out a lot when I was in junior high and high school and even college was I this was my thing so I was sitting back here and if I got out in front you know outside pitch I was done my butt went out I went reaching for balls but the reason why was because I had my weight back as I stride and then as I went into my turn, my body's going to want to balance me out. Just like when I was standing there on one leg with my eyes closed, my brain's trying to balance out my body and create some homeostasis. So what's happening is I got my weight overloaded on the backside, and I can't stand like this all day. 
if I stood like this for about an hour, this leg's gonna explode. This one, I would have to shift my weight back over here to, to take the pressure off this back leg. So what happens is, since I'm not in, an, I'm not in a balanced position, now I'm balanced as in I'm not falling over, but I'm not in a balanced position according to what my brain thinks. It has to turn muscles on back here to keep, to keep the, my weight back farther. So from back here, as I turn, now my head has to shift forward. My, my whole center of mass has to shift forward as I go into my turn. And this is why I had late movement later, or throughout my career really, from junior high, high school on, on had, I had a hard time hitting breaking stuff because I was always focused on trying to keep that weight back. And I was getting late head movement forward during the turn when I'm trying to take this bat and put that ball right on the sweet spot. So what we want to do is do the opposite. We want our hitters to go forward first, get head movement out of the way early, because that's what we see with the lead hitters. You can watch them. Just watch them in slow motion, pick out somebody in the stands behind them as a point of reference, and then see how far their head moves. Sometimes it moves down and forward, not, not just forward. It moves down and forward. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that they're getting their head movement out of the way early. So now we got the opposite is true here. So we got the weight on the front leg about 60% or 55% and the back side's about 40 to 45%. So from here, then the, the other move is like I, I talk about the swing being a snapping towel. So we're going to see this kind of throwing the towel out and then we're going to snap it back real quick. So we're going to see this, this action here and then we're going to come here and actually what's going to happen is we'll well, you're going to say, well, is your head going to move back? Actually, it doesn't. Because of the forward momentum, when you see these elite hitters, you're going to see their head move forward, but then as they turn, as they transfer their linear momentum into angular or turning momentum, you're actually going to see their head stay still on their center axis because their, their, their center mass doesn't have to move forward anymore. So it just basically stays where it's at, and now we have that nice, smooth center axis of rotation, the spine and the head. Everything kind of stays there. So we have early head movement, but then we have a stable head. Does that make sense? Versus sitting back, we have, we have no head movement, and then we have late head movement here when we're trying to get that ball to hit that bat on the sweet spot. So proprioception is a scary term, but when we apply it to dynamic movement, it makes a whole, whole lot of sense. The other example my buddy Taylor Gardner, the backspin T, talks about is the first baseman receiving a throw. So you see the first baseman I stand in there here, and as that throw comes from the shortstop or third baseman across the diamond, they're moving forward to that ball. They're actually trying to get that head on line with that ball in the glove so that they can see it. And if it gets down lower, that's when you see them actually go into the splits and they grab it this way. But their head's moving forward just, just as much as a hitter's head's moving forward, just as much as a pitcher's head's moving forward. And if we start going into javelin throwers and shot putters, all their heads are moving forward. Yeah, they're not hitting a baseball. Most of them are throwing objects, but it's still all part of the head being used to that movement up and down. And so what I ask you to do, here's a challenge, is at home, I want you to, to do something goofy. I want you to watch a movie or watch TV lying upside down. So you're basically, TV's behind you and you're upside down like this. This is the weird things that I do, okay? So if you, if you do that, what you're gonna notice is when people are walking, now make sure you're walk, watching people, right? When they're walking, walking, talking down the street. And what's weird, you're gonna see what's weird is that they're bouncing up and down, it seems like. When you're upside down, you're watching it, they're bouncing up and down. And it looks weird. It looks like they're aliens or something. But it's something that when we're right side up and we see that, we don't pick up on that movement. But what happens is, is when we walk, we're actually that Achilles tendon is popping us up and down, up and down, up and down. So we see the head's actually moving all the time. Whether we're walking, running, doing any kind of physical activity, we're either moving up and down or we're moving forward. So we've learned, our eyes have learned to adjust, just like what Greg Maddox talked about when we're driving on the freeway at 65, 70 miles an hour. Our eyes adjust to this movement. And it doesn't matter, uh, it, it does matter if we're, uh, from the more I research into this, if we move down too much in our stride and forward. So if you watch, say, Victor Martinez, he's a switch hitter, but if you watch him, I have a left-handed swing of him, and he moves forward. He doesn't really move down too much. So you see a, a bend in the knees. You see this with Joey Votto. A lot of your hitters that have a high on base, high slugging, low strikeouts, higher walks, 
You see these hitters like Victor Martinez hits about as many home runs as he strikes out. He strikes out a little bit more, maybe 10, 10 strikeouts more than home runs in a season, but the the proof is in the pudding. The guy's awesome, but that's that's pretty that's like Joe DiMaggio territory. But you'll see him in a in a bend, in, in a low bend, low crouch, but you'll see a lot of forward momentum, but he'll slide forward. He doesn't it's not like a Mike Trout where Mike Trout's up up tall and you'll see him kind of he'll he'll go down and forward. Experiment with both, but my hypothesis is that if we can eliminate the down part and just go forward, that our hitter is going to be a little bit more balanced, especially when we're trying to hit curveballs and off-speed stuff. And the, because we need the, the movement, we need the head movement early, it's going to help them to keep that head from, from moving forward if we're teaching our hitters to sit back. So in this video we talked about why late head movement fails and early head movement succeeds. We answered the reader questions of forward momentum impact on hitting a curveball and being more balanced. Does a wide stance give more balance and ability to see the ball better? We talked about with Victor Martinez being, you know, slightly in a good athletic position, good bend in the knees where we have tri triple flexion. We got a little flexing in the hip. We got knees and we got ankles and trying to be more of a sliding forward versus being up tall and then falling down and forward, trying to minimize that so that we can have, again, your hitters, if you look at them, the ones that have a little bit more bend in their joints, in their hip, their knees, and their ankles, tend to be better at hitting off speed and curveballs. Uh, and also one thing going back before we finish this video is getting forward, it all helps too to have that bend in that front knee. When we land straight, it makes it harder when we see a slider or curveball or breaking ball or a off speed pitch to be able to make an adjustment to that. So when we land, we land with the bent front knee and what that's going to do is that's going to help us like what Jamie Savalas calls in positional hitting the cushion or the double cushion. So we can cushion into that front leg and then go into our turn. So it's also a defense mechanism against breaking and off-speed stuff. We also talked about proprioception and sitting back, why that is a myth, and keeping the head still is a myth. We talked about how the first baseman receives a throw by moving forward, just like a pitcher moves forward when he throws a pitch, a javelin thrower, a shot putter, a lacrosse thrower, soccer, soccer kicker, they're kicking a ball. Any, any athletic sport we can talk about as an example. And the other thing I challenge you to do is to lay down your couch upside down or even on the ground upside down where you can look at the TV and watch people walking around. You're going to see this constant bouncing around. It looks kind of weird because we don't, when we look at it regular, that we don't pick up on it because we're so used to it. But when you go upside down, you really see it. So we'll see you in the next video. The Hitty Performance Lab wants to know, did you know that you may be losing out on eight miles per hour of average bat speed because of one commonly taught hitting technique? Have you ever heard the coaching terms? Squish the bug, squish out the cigarette butt. Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added an average of eight miles an hour to average bat speed by doing the exact opposite of squishing the bug. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.